Hey guys, our good buddy Tom Zarbo asked me to show you all how I'm using this router sled to do the curved tops on my cabinets. So, I figured I'd give it a whirl. I don't have any fancy cameras besides my cell phone, so you guys are going to get what you get for quality. But let's hop to it. Okay, the first thing I want you to see is what the top of this cabinet looks like before I do anything to it. So, as you can kind of see, don't move too fast here, uh, the top is made up of layers. So it's stepping up to the top of the cabinet. And if you look at it from the bottom side, you can kind of see there layers stacked on the inside as well. So at the end of the day, when this is all cut, it's supposed to look like this one did. Okay, so it has a nice 80 inch radius curve all the way down the back, which is the same radius that I put on the sides of the cabinet as well. So the way that I got that radius was to make a router trammel arm, and it's 80 inches long, and I cut these side rails to that radius, going all the way down. So I cut two of the same radius, made sure that they were the same, and I shimmed everything up on my spoil board here. I've got some three quarter inch layers there and there. And the reason I have those is to give myself a little bit of offset so that my router cutter has somewhere to go that isn't cutting into my wall. Um, and it also helps to kind of sandwich everything in place. Uh, I have the same idea going on the back side. Push this router back up. Same ideas in place with uh, a piece to lock it into the back side as well. Um, this runner system, I just had to make sure that I was able to span the router all the way from one edge to the other and still have contact on the far side. All I had to do was put some paste wax on these rails and on the bottom of these runners to keep things moving nice and smooth. And when I actually use it, I've got a, uh, another piece of wood that I sit here and I clamp to these legs to try to keep myself from only going forward to back, not kind of drifting side to side while I'm doing it. The, uh, see the important bits on the router. Move this as far forward as I can. I'll show you guys what I've got. So I'm using a one inch cutter from white side on this, just a straight, straight cutter on the bottom. Uh, this is so that I don't have to take a million tiny passes as I'm going through doing this. Let me focus on that a little bit. There we go. Yeah, just a one inch router, one inch router bit. Uh, the way that I set this up is I try to uh, get this router plunged as deep as I can so that the, uh, the edge of the cutter is just at the edge of this board. And that'll be my absolute bottom point. And then I'm using the turrets on the router itself. I'll just make sure that I start my first cut all the way up here as high as I can go and then just step my way down a little bit at a time so that I'm not hogging off too much material at once. I guess uh, you know safety first all that good stuff so I'm gonna get my mask and glasses and earplugs in and uh, I'll set the camera up on my, uh, my fancy tripod back here and try to give you guys some action shots of this actually happening. So hang tight. All right guys, we're back. So the way this works, since my cutter is constantly turning in this direction, I'm only gonna be cutting as I pull the router back towards me so that I'm always doing conventional. I'm not doing a weird climb mill again, having the router shoot down the board here. So uh, earplugs are in. Eyeglasses on, mask on, and extra ears. Party on.
right, guys, there we go. So that's everything down to almost the final depth. I got one more click that I can go on my turret stops, but I wanted to make sure that I got this nice and flush, um, you know, good to the surface. There's still one flat edge right here where one of the layers that stepped down hasn't quite smoothed out. That'll get taken care of on the last pass. Uh, just let you guys have a, a closer look here. There's that edge I was talking about. Right there, that'll get taken care of in the last pass. And what I did last time was continue to use the turrets, go all the way to that last turret stop, all the way down there. But I used the wood like I did this time and ended up with the, uh, you know, the, that vertical pattern that you can see there. What I didn't like about that, telling on myself, is that I ended up with a few spots right there, right there, and maybe even a few down here on this edge there and there where I had plunged the router down and I guess I pressed it a little too hard. So in order to combat that, I'm going to just set it once not going to worry about the wood and we're just going to slide the whole thing back and forth and see what happens hopefully i don't screw something up go guys got all the gear off now and I should have done it this way on the other cabinet yeah setting that depth one time was definitely the right move top of this cabinet yeah you can still you can still see the little ridges but that ought to sand out but the rest of it it's pretty damn smooth I'm happy with that overall there's only a, a few small places I'll show you here A couple of places like that, and maybe a smidge there, and a little bit over here and here. These are these aren't tear outs; these are just knot hole pieces that made it into the ply and managed to be exposed. A little bit of wood filler will call, fill that in and be just fine. That's kind of neat too. I like doing this; just little like birthmarks that pop out. Adds a little bit extra character. All right. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to make sure I have this thing all sped up so you don't have to watch me do this for an hour and a half on video. Hope it was helpful. If you have questions, let me know. Talk to you later.